Bro, let me tell you something almost nobody notices about Qualcomm. Every two generations, they drop a chip that completely resets the game. The GPU gets bigger, power drops, and the performance just explodes in a way that kills every graphics bottleneck we're used to seeing. And that moment is coming again. Late October 2026, when the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 6 finally debuts. And trust me, this thing is not just fast. It's terrifying. We're talking about a chip inside a phone that easily leaves the PS4 Pro behind. Like, it's not even a challenge anymore. And even though it doesn't fully reach PS5 or Xbox Series X levels, the gap is now so small that it honestly feels illegal. When you compare it to mobile gaming hardware, forget it. The Switch gets dusted, Steam Deck isn't even close, and all these portable consoles people hype up, they fall behind instantly. This isn't a smartphone GPU anymore. This is mini console hardware. But the craziest part is something nobody talks about. N2P manufacturing. People hear two nanometer and think it's just a smaller number. No bro, the Gen 6 isn't made on the normal two nanometer process. It's made on N2P, the optimized version. Think of it like TSMC taking the world's most advanced chip tech, then squeezing it even tighter, polishing it, refining it, and pushing it past what should be possible. That means more transistors packed tighter, less electrical leak, less heat, better efficiency, more raw power. That's why this chip behaves like something from the future. And inside it, the CPU architecture is where the real magic happens. It's a three-layer setup, two plus three plus three. A lot of people think that's just marketing, but no, it's serious engineering to make sure every single task gets handled the right way without wasting battery. Here's how it works. The two ultra cores. These are the monsters. They can hit five gigahertz or even higher. They only wake up when you're doing something crazy heavy gaming, ray tracing, local AI, video editing, anything that melts weaker chips. When these kick in, your phone feels like a tiny gaming PC. The three performance cores, they handle the big everyday stuff. Multitasking, HDR camera, background games, social apps, 4K recording. They're fast, but don't drain your battery as hard. The three efficiency cores, these are the silent workers. Notifications, light apps, system tasks, they keep everything smooth while using almost no power. Why is the setup so powerful? Because every job goes to the right core. Light tasks on the efficiency cores, medium tasks on the performance cores, heavy tasks on the 5 gigahertz monsters. No lag, no bottlenecks, no sudden overheating. It's one of the smartest CPU designs Qualcomm has ever made. Now let's talk about the GPU, because this is where things get insane. Every two generations, Qualcomm does something wild with their graphics. And for Gen 6, we're looking at a possible Adreno 850 with ray tracing, new APIs, more execution units, higher GPU clocks, LPDDR6, more cache, better efficiency. All combined with N2P, this could mean a 30 to 40% jump in graphics. That's why games like GTA 5, NBA 2K, Unreal Engine 5 titles can run at 70 to 80 FPS on ultra settings. GTA 5 at almost 2K resolution on a phone at ultra running over 70 FPS? Bro, that's not normal. That's crazy. Now, compare it to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, like the one inside the Xiaomi 17 Pro Max. That chip was strong, but limited. GTA 5 at 2K Ultra was around 45 to 50 FPS, maybe less. Still amazing, but nothing close to what Gen 6 is about to bring. Gen 6 isn't a small upgrade. It's a full jump into a new category. It's like Qualcomm said, let's stop pretending smartphones can't be consoles. And now they're proving it. With Gen 6, games will not only run smoother, they'll run with more stability, higher FPS, better lighting, better textures, and no frame drops when using a cooler. This is the first time mobile devices truly start to enter console territory. Let's stay realistic. No, it's not replacing a PS5, 
but it is making handheld consoles irrelevant. And that's why people call it the mobile monster, not because of benchmark numbers, but because of the real-world gaming experience. Smooth, stable, high FPS, ray tracing, low heat, low power, no lag. This chip is not just another upgrade, it's a game changer. And when it drops in late October 2026, the entire mobile world is going to shift. Because this is the moment smartphones stop being just phones and start becoming real gaming machines.